Cool, here we are in the finals. Hello and good luck to already happening. We're going to play first because I don't want to die to another aggressive deck. Uh, bomber, so we're going to have to mulligan this guy. Um, this isn't great, but certainly keepable instead of going down to the fiver on the play. Is this the blue-white heroic deck I was scared of? No, green. Okay, so a lot of asps, mayhaps. Playing this in case I do draw the uh, the spear. Since I'm playing the idol on this turn, there's no reason to do the double black cure thing. What do we have here? Seder Hedonist. That's fascinating. Scholar of Athreos. Happy to play now. Nope. So my opponent can do a 4-drop this turn while sacrificing the Satyr Hedonist. I guess I'm okay with that. Oh no, a 5-drop. Oh. That could get scary. I guess best case scenario for me is this Hedonist is here as an aggressive card. And my opponent is trying to do green-red uh, aggressive, <laughs> the more than likely it's a ramp card in a deck that has tons of fatties, which at the moment I don't have ways of dealing with. Sure. So, not too sure what the deal is with this because the mana is going to empty out of the pool. Is there a pump? Go for it. Savage Surge? Yes, please. Um, even though the scholar is my win condition right now, I just want to be staying alive so I draw into more stuff. Like this. Um, I will play it now, because I don't want more defense. It's kind of a bummer because I don't get full value with my disciple, but I get a card out of hand. I get more defense. We're okay. I hope there's just not all lands. <laughs> We'll get rid of the Magma Jet. Forest and Cyclops. Okay. There's the Forest. So there's an ill tempered Cyclops that can come down any moment. Right now I have the tools to deal with the Baleful Eidolon. I could have taken the Cyclops out and just kept up my gods willing to counter a nice shiny Magma Jet, but I think it kind of showcases that I have something like that. Here comes a big old fatty. What six drop do you have? A Magma Jet plus Ill Tempered Cyclops? Yep, that's what it is. All right, now it's going to be a little bit challenging since there was a second removal spell there. We need to draw something that can deal with the 3-3 Trampler. Here comes that guy. Let me draw some lands. That's not terribly exciting. I might go ahead and do a block, God's Willing, Prevent All Damage. Um, in order to scry into action. Not too sure if that's a good idea or not. For now, my opponent can't win Strassi. I'll take three a turn. Ooh, lots of Cyclopses. Alright, I need an answer to a Cyclops. That's not it. I'll just keep flooding out. How about that? If it only has one card in hand, so if I don't take too much damage, I could be okay. For five, oy. I don't know if I want to go down to 11 against this. I think I should have scryed. Oh, there's an asp. Something good. Not what I was looking for, but hmm, we'll see. If my opponent doesn't have a land, it'll be good.
Land? Yay, no land. <laughs> that's going on the bottom, because that's going to do absolutely zilch. Though I like the life gain. I still get hit for four points of damage here. Well, that's nothing good. And that's pretty much the game. I assume a land's going to come down here. Block, block, go down to four. Lots of things to kill me in the near future. Nope. Maybe more removal? Time to feed. Yeah, that'll do it. Let's see what else my opponent has here. An ordeal. Don't show me an ordeal. Well, I guess my opponent doesn't know there's a win in hand. But an ordeal is silly. Alrighty. So, big old drops is what I'm worried about. Viper's Kiss can be good because of all of the monstrosity. I'm not worried about early game too much. Mostly uh, my remo the removal spells that exist. Do I care about Freakus Cure? No. There's a lot that it doesn't deal with. Um, all we saw was the Satter. That's not a big deal. In fact, Viper's Kiss deals with it just as well. And everything else I think I'm a fan of. Cool. Do I want to play first again? Yeah, I think I do, because my opponent does go into like two drop or deal or something. That's going to be really bad. It could be correct to uh, be on the draw against my opponent, since I want some hunger in my mana. And I want to be able to actually hit those. But letting my opponent get a super early, you know, hedonist plus something else would be really bad. Gosh, again? One land gets me return phalanx. A swamp gets me a cure in this... Yeah, I got a mole. What a bummer. Oi! Well, I'm going out of five. This is a keep. I'm not excited, but it's a keep. <laughs> At this point, I want a uh, Satter to be played so I can Vipers kiss it. Not sad. All right, let's go aggro against my opponent and see what happens. Just start bashing it with Bronze Sable left and right. No red so far. Yay! That's only 8 because I do want to kill it with the Viper's Kiss. Kind of important. I think I needed to do that. If my opponent was going to... Uh, get a 5 drop on this turn, it would be really bad. Two twos. Two 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 twos. Attacking in because of the Savage Surge. So my opponent was not going to block, and my opponent did not. Alright. This Divine Verdict is going to take out one fatty eventually. But... <laughs> Tacking in? Well, we already saw the Savage Surge play, so we'll just go ahead and take the two right now. What else are you doing? As an instant. Feral Invocation? Yeah. Okay. That's probably going to get a Divine Verdict in the following turn. There's one red available. Hmm. 
Uh oh, asp time. It might be better to uh, try to hold out for a land to lash the hunter. Ooh, no. We're gonna kill it now. It, my opponent gets the lands. Or does it? Is that only this? I think it's only the. Uh, Yes, it resolved. <laughs> what else is there? Magma Jet. Okay. Stem the bleeding yourself, which is very good, because now I just have two points of damage if I even use up all my mana. That's very good once we get there. Alright, there's hope from this mole now. I see it. My opponent has two cards in hand. I just need a land. I really just need a land. Come on, Lando. 18 land deck. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Nemesis Immortals. That's a good card. And I don't have good ways to deal with it. Yay, land. Okay, there's one card in hand. Right now my lash does nothing. How many? 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, ooh, so one more land, we get a 10-10 on our hands. So it's a race, and the only way I'm winning that race is with the sentry. Ugh. Go for it. At least there's no monstrosity. Ouch. Time to feed? Please don't time to feed. Mm, it's not a time to feed. Nessian Asp. Interesting. So, play this guy. I think we go and attack in with the sentry. It'll have regen. We'll do a lash of the whip against the asp. Kill it with the sentry before it has monstrosity. We're still taking a lot of damage each turn. And I'm because I could take ten next turn, and a savage surge kills me. But I have a sentry for backup. Oof. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I'm not taking the scholar. My opponent knows what'll be up at that point. Opponent should not block here. Signaling something. Good job, opponent. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one land gets my opponent. So I can drop my opponent to six, but then I only have four. And my opponent has anything, like a creature, then I'm then I'm gone. Nope. Okay, so both these guys can monstrosity now. Okay, so we have to block, because 10 and 4 is 14, 8 and 5, yeah, so we have to do some blocks. Is there any way for me to use the Slash of the Whips in order to kill something after it gets monstrosityed? I think we block. Here's the thing. I need to block so that I can kill something that I assume the monstrosity is going to go through. I just hope that my person or my opponent monstrosities whoever is uh, not blocked. That's what I have to hope for. Right?
Ah, oh, this is a bummer. So 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm hoping what my opponent's thinking with no gas is a monstrosity of the ass put my opponent down to one. Um, because what I would do in response is after this is monstrosity and I take eight from the ass, I take three from regenerating the century of the underworld. Down to one. Basically down to two because my opponent might think there's a scholar activation online. When in reality... I'm hoping to kill this nemesis of mortals with a lash of the whip. Yay! It happened! Cool. So we go down to four. Our opponent will go down to four. Okay, so sorry, we're back. I was mentioning uh, that the commentary that we had earlier was pretty fun, since our opponent was um, having a good time. All right. Let's see if we can get through this. Mm. Doesn't really help out a whole lot. Three, four, five, six doesn't do a whole lot against the opponent with any extra stuff, so we're going to keep our guy back for blocks in case there is a removal spell. If something comes down to take out the sentry, we have to regenerate it, pump our scholar. Uh, tight spot. I think there are outs with two cards in hand. I'm not sure if there's outs in just one card, though I could certainly be wrong against these colors. What else is there? Ooh! Xenagos! Nice! Um, what is my opponent looking to do? Just a plus one it? Uh, there must be some other big old fatty. Staunch Heart Warrior, that's a thing. Assume no attacks now, correct. Oops, totally clicking the wrong dude. Oi. Attack in with both. Sentry has to be blocked. Stunt Hard Warrior takes the Scholar. Nothing happens. So instead, we just hang out. Gives my opponent time to start bashing through. But there has to be an answer this turn to the Scholar of Athreos. Which there certainly could be. Very precarious here. Okay, that's a good sign at first. Okay, how's this happening? Um, Savage Surge kills me, which we've seen, if uh, I don't block these dudes. However, it also takes out the Scholar of Athreos, which I need to survive. So the best bet is put the Sentry in front of the Asp, regenerate it, put a Scholar in front of the Staunch Hearted Warrior, um... Activate, activate, yeah, that should, that should, that's our best hope right now. We really want one of our guys to survive this. <laughs> if somehow both go down, that's going to be hard. Hold on. So this is tough. 
The sentry gets eaten. That's okay, right? Yeah, because the scholar is just going to win. Because a pump kills me. So I'd only do that in response. Please stay alive, scholar of Athreos. Oof. Hard to play around that. Yeah, as my opponents mentioned, getting trained that much. Oof. Um, good, no, definitely a good play on my opponent's part. Super fun. Okay, let's go to what else we can do. Now, my opponent's going to be on the play for the first time. I still think I like everything I have in the deck at the moment. I don't think I want to pull anything else out. So we're going to run it back the way it is. Yes, yes indeed. Oh, I missed this part of the commentary where um, my opponent mentioned Monstrous was a mistake. Um, it was getting I think it was still, and I'm assuming this is talking about the choice between Monstrosity, the Asp, or the Asp, the Asp, or the Nemesis, and if it was right to do it at that time. My opponent got blown out by the Lash, in a sense, not really blown out, but my opponent, you know, had that lash to deal with. But I still think it was correct because if my opponent didn't put more pressure on me, the drain would have gotten there. Um, no, we're not going to mulligan. We have a slow start, but some good defense and great cards in this matchup. Uh, pulling a card out of hand as well as getting our sentry online is going to be kind of key. My opponent mulled down the one, which isn't ideal, of course, but it's not horrible, like going down to five. So let's see what kind of aggressive start may or may not happen here. Nothing at the moment. That's grand. Um, representing a Farika's Cure that I don't have versus possibly drawing the spear uh, and not being able to play it, I think isn't very good. So I'd much rather just showcase that I don't have it. All right, nothing for my opponent right away, and then we have a really nice first play because I can't get lightning struck. Let me start with our scholar into a four and a five. So now we're starting to curve out, and we got through our, the most difficult parts of the game. And then my opponent is also starting to get some fatties online. Um, we're only taking two out of my opponent. So there's an argument not to play the Disciple, because there'll still be a huge fatty that comes down. But I th think I need to start playing out my mana. Or playing out my, my cards. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I'm going to wait and just drain for one this turn. Since the Disciple Phoenix isn't doing anything on blocks, and getting my opponent's best card in full information is going to be more important um, in a turn or two. If the Disciple was able to block something, then I wouldn't value so highly getting all the cards revealed and then discard. Uh, but it's not like I'm blocking the Ill-Tempered Cyclops with these two anyway, so... But this unanswered Ill-Tempered Cyclops, which will be able to monstrosity, I assume, in the very near future, is going to be a challenge. At this point, I want to stay alive. And if the Scholar of Athros takes out a uh, a removal sp or a, a combat trick, I'm actually okay with that, um, or a removal spell or something. Yeah, there we go. Because uh, I want those cards out of hand, and um, the Scholar of Athros, even though it's my lifesaver, uh, with this much pressure, it's not going to be doing a whole lot in the long run. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get to a point in the game where I think the Scholar is going to be able to take over. My opponent can play a 3 or less drop, and that's okay, and then I'll get to see the last two cards in hand and make a discard. Otherwise, I'm not too sure what I want to do. If there's three cards in hand, my opponent will get the best card back. 
I might just be tempted to uh, play out my sentry. Mm, we do nothing, huh? But my opponent's gonna be able to play the best card next turn anyway, I assume. So let's just go ahead and play the disciple. Because I'm not gonna be taking it. As in the best card. I'm not gonna be taking the best card. Here we are. Let's see, so right now I don't have any in hand, so this is kind of an irrelevant card, and I can play around it if I need to. The thing is, if I draw my whip or my spear, it's pretty much just just gone, right? Um, but that's off luck, so. Destructive revelry, not great. Um, that'll eat like the whip or something, but can't do much about it at this point. Lightning Strike, Magma Jet. Just doing it to my face to do a scry. So at least we, you know, knew what was up against my opponent, and my opponent is out of gas. But we're behind this race of the ill-tempered Cyclops because my opponent gets to draw a land, which just happened, and now we're taking six a turn. So if we draw one way to deal with this ill-tempered Cyclops, we're in good shape. If we don't, though, it's going to eat us alive. Alive! Hmm, that's one way. Uh, the thing is, the destructive uh, revelry is going to take out the Belfal Eidolon. So, let's see. I play Sentry. I need to talk this out, so sorry if this is going to take forever, but I t play Sentry, attack in for one, I get hit down to six, I'm at six. Sentry can attack the following turn, I can put the Eidolon on top of the Sentry, but then it gets, it eats up the uh, um, Destructive Revelry which is going to get eaten anyway. But do I want my opponent to try to take out the Eidolon right now? No. I mean, this is definitely the right play. I need to start putting pressure on my opponent. I'm not going to block with the Disciple this turn, so I'll get one point of damage in. Biggest worry would probably be like a lightning strike right now against the sentry. Ooh, and there's an asp. We're going to barely be able to survive. Spear's good. So let's think this through. If I put the island on, I can regenerate. I do get to put four points of damage through. Um, the spear is nice, but I'll probably take the destructive revelry. So if I and I can't really be taking damage anyway. I'm so low on life. <laughs> uh, I like my opponent's uh, comment there. Um. Maybe I just go ahead and play both and let my opponent decide what's more important. I don't like that, but I think it might be important for me to play the Eidolon down on the ground, block whatever comes through, have the spear out, and both are going to be problems for my opponent. Otherwise, we put the Eidolon on the sentry, offer an attack in, I'm down to three. 
That's no bueno. I think this is what I have to do here. It sucks giving my opponent the option, but I need to put out this power. And in in this situation, but these cards are basically just as good against each other. If my opponent wants to be able to monstrosity the ass, the land has to be played before combat. Which is nice just in terms of knowing what my opponent has in hand. But if my opponent attacks in with both, I mean, I really don't see how I survive this. I put the Eidolon in front of the Asp. I put the Phoenix in front of the Ill-Tempered Cyclops. I'm so low on life against my opponent, I don't see a really good way of coming out. Divine Verdict would probably be the only way for me to get out of it. And even then I'll be so low on life. If I jump the Eidolon in front of the Ill-Tempered Cyclops, then that's then I also need to put like the disciple in front. And destructive revelry puts me down to four. Yep. So there goes that. I think I'm just dead here. Right? Because I have to double... Well, I guess I don't have to double block. But I have to block both dudes, right? Uh, I don't know if I play that entirely correctly. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I can just take... So, unfortunately, we just got to go a little bit along these lines and just accept the fact that, that both my creatures are going to die. I'm um, taking two points so I can't regenerate. Nothing else happens. That's it. And I don't think there's really any miracle left for me. Nope, that's it. We'll offer the GG's to our super duper opponent here. Play that guy out. And um, call it a game. And let's just go in and concede. Um, since we're dead. Uh, and yeah, that was super fun. I just said, wrote a little note to Amelano um, about how fun that was because we had a really grand old time playing against each other in the finals. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, I'm Ryan from Mano Bluff. Uh, comment, subscribe, or like on YouTube. Leave comments on manobluff.com. Guaranteed to respond there. I try to check YouTube, but not always good about it. And also, find me on Twitter, underscore, underscore, RJH, underscore, underscore. And we can start a chit-chat. Thanks so much again. Have a wonderful time checking out all the Born of the Gods uh, preview cards. We'll see you next week. Peace.